how is it supposed to work? You just want to run your machine, but every time you go up here to work on something, ugh. I'm the CNC repairman. Are you a belt? I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls pull off. Why are there so many issues on the tool changer? Well, because it involves all sorts of stuff. And in this video, I wanna go over what happens when this moves up and down. Notice it's kind of sluggish going up. It goes, eh, psh, psh. If we go to the diagnostics page, so press parameter diagnostics, we can look at the tool release. Now I can hit this button too. So we have a unclamp, drawbar open, drawbar close. They're right here on the screen. Drawbar open, drawbar close. Now you might see some other stuff changing the outputs on that screen, but that's what we're looking for. And if you look, it goes from one on the bottom to zero on the top, zero, zero, one, zero, then I release it, zero, zero, one, zero. It's kind of sluggish going up. That would cause you an intermittent tool changer issue if it goes in and it hangs up and it's waiting for it to clamp. Usually it's caused by one of those or one of those, but this is brand new. So let's pop the little exhaust and let's see what it sounds like. Now I've done this in the field two or three times on machines that act exactly like this. So they don't have to keep getting into the head cover. Okay, the exhaust is off and let's, let's hear what it sounds like and watch. Sounds different. Boom. Whoa, that's, that's clamping pretty quick. So this exhaust is plugged. Let's put a different one on it and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Sounds fine. Goes up pretty quick, but doesn't go And now the drawbar open close input is changing really quick. That's the way the machine is programmed. It wants to see that change from zero to one and back really quickly. So if you've tried this and you've tried this, or it's just acting slow, it could be that. You may need a rebuild kit for inside of here. And you may just need to take it apart. We have a video about how to take it apart. We have a video about troubleshooting these switches. But what about adjusting the switches? You notice this is the top ring. Now this ring contacts the switch when it goes all the way up. Now let's just, for kicks, replace the switches. Because an intermittent switch is a pain in the neck. They aren't that expensive. And if you're in here and you look and you go, man, my switches look old. The rollers have a flat spot on them. Let's replace the switch and then we need to adjust the switches correctly. So, got a video about how to pull the head cover without breaking it. Take a look at that. And let's go ahead and pop the switches off. We can replace the switches one at a time, check the input, and then we might need to adjust the switch in and out and you might have a different style ring on the top of your tool release piston. Uh, caveat, I'm gonna just throw in some, oh, you might have one of these. You might have a bigger tool release piston, it'll act no different. You might have a super speed and it'll act a little different because you have an inline and you have proc switches. Those you, you don't really adjust, but you might want to look at the whole solenoid assembly. If you have a machine with one switch, a proc switch, or two switches, it's essentially the same, but I just want to let you know that not every machine is going to look just like this. I'm just going to climb up here and let's pop a switch off. These are the original switches, most definitely. And many times, the original switches are still good. Still operating, not causing any issues, but if you get a flat spot on the switch, or, you know, it's had a million tool changes. I've seen machines that have two million tool changes. Uh, the switch can only operate correctly for so long. And then, where the contacts hit, they start bouncing and the machine has an issue with that. So there, there's a little bit of a flat spot here. Um, not terribly different, let's see. I don't know if we'll have an alarm. No alarm, because this is the bottom switch. I got the old switch unscrewed, and it's pretty simple, it's just a simple plug with a clip. If your switch is dead dead, and, and it's not changing input when it is plugged in and you're pushing here, yeah, you need a new switch. And we'll plug the new one in and check it. Go to our diagnostics page. Draw bar open. Okay. Draw bar open is on the bottom. The cable goes up on this side. And we'll tighten it down. OK, 
Okay, it's in. Now let's check it while hitting the tool release button. Okay, and look at the input. And the input changed, and it changed quickly. We don't want any sluggishness, whether it's the exhaust valve. Because of how dirty it is on the outside, it's probably that dirty on the inside. That was the unclamp switch being changed. Now let's change the clamp switch. Now there's a bracketry on the bottom. If you watch the timing before, you want it to go 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. You, you'll understand. I, I don't want to make it too simplified. But uh, there's, there's a procedure, correct height above. I think I have a video about push out. You may want to watch that and the correct push out. That's more important for if you're running a machine that has through spindle coolant that's a belt drive machine. The, the orientation of this unclamp switch is really important because when you activate through spindle coolant on a belt drive machine or gearbox, the pre-charge solenoid pushes it down and it wants to see this one go off and this one go off and that way it knows that it's just touching the top of the drawbar where the two carbide seals meet and you have about four or five PSI, not too much. That'll allow no coolant to leak from your through spindle coolant. Those aren't very, what's the right word? Not a lot of those are out there. There are a few. When I remove the clamp switch, which is on the top, I'm going to get, I think, an unclamp alarm. We'll see. Because the switch isn't closed. Yeah, I get, no, it's not an alarm. It's like a warning on the screen saying tool unclamp. When you press the button, you get that warning as well. There, there's no issue. We've got it disconnected. What could hold you up on your machine is if you're running on a weekend and an evening. Oh man, I get the tool unclamp alarm. Uh, it, it means that the top switch is bad. Now you could manually put a tool in here by hitting the button or hitting the switch and you could bypass it by jumping it out. I'll have to make a video about how to jump these out to get by, but the tool changer to operate needs to see both switches to fully operate automatically. But to quick run a single program, you'd go to the back and stick a jumper, uh, a, a little paper clip. You take a paper clip, you'd shove it in there, that would jumper it out, get rid of the tool unclamp message and you could run a single part. So switch is out, I'm gonna put the new one in. I'm always gonna check, I always check new parts, doesn't hurt, all right? Draw bar close is switching, so the new switch is good. Gonna route the cable, maybe even wire tie it up, wouldn't hurt. Gotta tilt the switch up, get the first screw in, and then we can turn it down and put the other screw in. Okay, let's check it now. I got nothing. Interesting. Nothing on drawbar open or drawbar close. This is why it's fun working on machines. It might, it's not high enough, so I'm gonna have to push this bracket in just a little bit. I don't know why it's not on that one. The drawbar close isn't changing either. I got the screws out of the bracket that hold both switches. I wanna show you really how to exactly do this so you're not guessing and you're not putting it together and putting the head cover on and, and having an issue with the tool change. As soon as you adjust these switches, you need to do a tool change, make sure all the wires are up. But I've got the bracket off and there's a slot kind of up here in the hole so we can push it a little further in and I don't want it to be right on the edge. So if I hit the button, Right here. Then I'm gonna just see, I'm gonna see, okay, where does the switch make on the diagnostic? And where do I hear it click? And I'm gonna go in the middle of the range on both the clamp and the unclamp. I'm gonna hold it there, then I'll run the screw down, and I'll do the same on the other side. Let's check it again. Not far enough in, push it a little further. I've worked on a few machines where I couldn't get it close enough in and I had to take the bracket over to a knee mill and machine out the bracket, just a little bit because I just couldn't push the screw over far enough. Try it one more time. Draw bar, 
open. That one's working fine. I think I was looking at the wrong one. Now let's go over here. We don't need to do anything for the upper one because it's already done. It needs to change to a one. That's the drawbar close. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list it. It'll go click. And then I'm going to just go a little bit further in and tighten down the screw. Back it off just a hair. I want it not all the way in. That'll be good. And then I put the other screw in, but let's just look at the diagnostic. Yeah. Draw bar sounds good. The diagnostic is working. That's how you adjust your clamp switch, your unclamp switch, how to get the height of them set correctly. And I hope this video helped you understand how to work on your machine and you're not going to be getting into it 15, 16, 17 times. I want you to get back to working in your machine, not on it. So thanks for watching this video. Please leave a comment below. If you have any questions about your machine, check out all of our other videos. If you need a part and you need it overnight and you need it for a good price, like two to 300% cheaper than OEM, check out my store, CNC Replacement Parts. We're here to help you get your machine running. Thanks for watching. <laughs>